Unit 5 Group Problems. A farmer who owns two goats, one cow, and one horse wishes to create three congruent adjacent rectangular regions in which to keep his animals. He has a total of 200 feet of fencing to create a rectangular adjacent regions. Let x represent the length of one rectangular region and let y represent the width. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and draw a picture that models the information above. Let's take a look at what that may look like. So off to the bottom right, you can see that we have three congruent adjacent rectangular regions. And so in each of those, he would house two goats in one, a cow in the other, and in the final space, he would house a horse. Now we also want to attach the variables x and y to represent the length of one rectangular region and also the width. And so I'm going to go ahead right now and remind us of what that looks like. So here is the three different rectangular regions down below. And we have to remember that it says that he has a total of 200 feet of fencing that he's going to use. So let's see if I can write neatly on my screen. I can see a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6x six plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 4y four is equal to 200. And when it says we want to express the width, I'm going to go up above and I can see that y represents the width. So I want to create an equation with what I have and I want to isolate the y. So it says y equals something. So in order to isolate the y, I'm going to start by subtracting 6x to the opposite side. And I have 4y equals 200 subtract 6x. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 4. Remember that 4 needs to be shared with both the 200 and the 6. So it looks like y equals 200 over 4 subtract 6 over 4x. So if I bring that up here, a reminder that 200 over 4 is the same as 50. And you know what? 6 over 4, sure, I could reduce it to 3 halves, or I could write it as an equivalent decimal, 1.5x. So whether you had 3 over 2 or equivalent 1.5, it's all the same thing. Let's move on now to part C. We want to express the combined area of the three regions. So if I'm talking about creating a, an equation as a function, and we're talking specifically about area, so the area of this function is equal to x times y. But there's not just one rectangle, there's three. Now it specifically says the function needs to be in terms of x. That means I need to take the y out and I need to replace it with what it is equivalent to. We can see y is equivalent to 50 subtract 1.5x. Now I have this equation right here. So this equation is the ability to express the combined area of the three rectangular figures in terms of the function x. Now I'm going to go ahead before we answer this next and we're talking about the domain of this and we're going to plug this in. If I had a graph and calculator at home, I'd plug it into the graph and calculator, but I forgot one. So let's go ahead here. We're going to keep this so that we can go back and see it if I come right back up here. And I'm going to plug in this equation right here that you see. I'm going to plug it into decimals. Let's find decimals. So instead of saying a of x equals, we're going to write y equals, so it's 3 times x, and it was 50 subtract 1.5x. Now clearly I cannot see much of this region, so oh, that's pretty good, but I need to be able to also see up above. Now I would use again the graphing calculator to do this, I just want to say that I would definitely use the graphing calculator, but here's, we have a general idea of what this looks like, a general idea. So the domain runs from 0, looking at the x values, to 33 and a third. So if I come back here and I'm talking about the current domain of this, it is greater than 0 and less than 33 and a third. Determine the area when one region is 20 feet. Okay, determine the, I said that wrong, determine the area when the length of one region is 20 feet. Okay, so when they're talking about length, they're referring to the x. So when x equals 20, what is the area? Remember the equation we plugged in? We pull up, put in a y, but 
a of x is how we write it in functional form. And it was 3 times x times 50 subtract 1.5, if I'm right. 50 subtract 1.5x. So this is the equation you should have plugged into your calculator. Of course, you would have y instead of f of x. Now we're going to sub 20 in, and instead of doing it like this, we can actually do it on a graphing calculator. So I'm going to bring it up here. We're going to keep that so I can refer back to it. And I'm going to start a new equation and say x equals 20 x equals 20. Whoops, 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 whoops. I messed up there. there. x equals 20. I want to find out where does this hit at the function. Okay, there it is. x equals 20. So when the length of one region is 20 units long, we can say the area would be 1200 square feet. I think it was feet. I said units because I can't see, but I think it was, what is this in terms of, it is in terms of feet. Okay, so when the length of one region is 20 feet, we can see that the area would be 1,200 square, 1,200 square feet. Let's go into the next one. Determine the maximum area, the maximum area. Okay, so to figure out the maximum area, on your calculator, you're going to use where you hit second trace maximum, and then you go left to the highest, right to the highest, and guess. Now, in Desmos, I'm just simply going to click here. And you definitely want to use your calculator over Desmos because you can't use Desmos on the test, either the unit test or the AP exam. So here's what we can see. We can see the maximum area is 1,250 square feet. Let's go on to our next question. Our next question says, Using the information from the previous area, determine the dimensions. Okay, we want to know the dimensions when we've hit the maximum area. So dimensions of this, and we're talking for the individual regions. All right, so let me come back here. So look at, this is the x value. This represents the length of one of those rectangular units. So one of the rectangular units is 16.6 .6 repeating. Keep that in mind, 16.6 .6 repeating. I'm going to come back up here to Desmos one more time. I'm going to use this. Just have an extra one. And remember, I know that y equals y equals 50 subtract 1.5x. So in this position, remember, when we talk about a rectangular region that's going to hold the cow or the horse or the two goats, we're going to talk the length by the width. So we know one of the lengths when we hit that maximum. Oh, it disappeared on me. Must have been this one. Uh, well, I must have accidentally deleted it. Let me do it real quick. Y equals 3x, and this is 50 subtract 1.5x. There it is. There's our maximum. When we hit our maximum area, <coughs> we know the length of one of the rectangular regions is 16.6 .6 repeating feet. So. 16.6 .6 repeating feet, right? So that's going to be the length of one. And now when we write it, we write it like this. We write length by width. So now I need to figure out what is the y value. And if you're a little bit lost, remember I am taking right now and I'm looking at, I know what this length is and I want to know what this length is. I know this is 16.6 .6 repeating when I maximize the area of these regions with 200 square feet of fencing. Now let's figure out what the y value is. So coming back here again, thank you for your patience. Coming back here again, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to take out the x because I know the x is 16 point, I'm just going to put a lot of sixes in. So when the length of one of the rectangular regions is 16.6 .6 repeating feet, we know that y equals 25 feet. So the dimensions would be 16.6 .6 repeating times 25. And if you're more of a visual person, it's looking like this. 16.6 .6 repeating feet by 25 feet. Okay, let's go down to our second example. A rectangular package sent by the US Postal Service has a maximum combined length and girth of 108 inches. The girth of the package is determined by adding the perimeter of the cross sections of the package. Okay, so let's first start by drawing this. This is a rectangular prism that looks like what you see on the right hand side and we have a length across the bottom, a width going back and a height going up. And So we can see the box that's often sent 
um, by the U.S. Postal Service. All right, the next thing we're going to do at Part B is we're going to express the length of the package in terms of x. So let's go with what we know. I'm going to come back up here and it says that if I take the length plus the girth, so length plus girth, it equals 108. Now also in this part, notice that it tells me, let me come back up here, it says the length of the base will be y. So I'm going to put a y here. The width and the height will be represented with x. Okay, so that's what it looks like. If I come over here, we can see that down below on the right. Um, so I'm going to replace the length with y. Now how, oops, sorry, that should be a plus sign. Now how do we achieve the girth? It says the girth is going to be a cross section. So if we measure here, and then here, and then back again, and then this area, we want to know what is going to be this length. That's the girth. Well, we can see this is x, so I have x here, and I have x here, so x plus x. And this distance is the same as x, and this distance is the same as x. So I have four x's all the way around to get the girth. So plus four x equals 108. Now we want to express the length. As a reminder, the length of the base is y. So that means we want to isolate the y, isolate the y. To isolate the y, I'm going to subtract 104 to the opposite side. That's what y equals. Express the volume. So volume is length times width times height. Let's replace what we know. We know the length is y, that's this part. We know the width is x, and we know the height is x. But it says express the volume as a function. So there we go, expressing it as a function. So express it as a function, but we only want the variable x. That means I need to replace y. Well, what is y equivalent to? We can write x times x or x squared on the very end. y is equivalent to 108 subtract 4x. I've just expressed the volume of this package as a function of x. Now, we're going to go ahead and graph this so we can answer the next question, what is the domain? So 108 minus 4x. Let me come up here. 108 minus 4x. All right, we have 108 subtract 4x times x times x. Whoops, times x again. So this is what we have. Let me see here. This doesn't look quite right. Let's come back and try this again. 108 subtract 4x times x times x again. Hmm. There we go. So if we went all the way up here, we could see it. And we'll get up to that point in a little bit, but we're looking for the first part is what is the domain. So there's 0 to 27. So the domain is between 0 to 27. The domain is between 0 to 27. I can write that on this particular one. So we have 0 is the domain all the way to 27. Let's keep that graph up. Determine the volume when the length of the package is 80. So length, remember length was our y. So what equations do we know about y? If I go way back here, we know that y is equal to, where is that equation? Here it is, y is equal to 108 subtract 4x, 108 subtract 4x. y is equal to 108 subtract 4x. So determine the volume, so that's ultimately what we're going to get to, when the length of the package is equal to 80 inches. What different ways could we do this? Let's talk about this. What is the quickest way to do this? Well, we know that volume is length times width times height. And they're telling us the length of the package is 80. The length of the package is 80. Okay, and we ultimately want to know what the volume is. So I'm going to go ahead right now, and I'm going to substitute 80 in for y. That's what y represents. 80 equals 108 subtract 48. So start by subtracting 108 from both sides. I get a negative 28 equals negative 4x. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. 
and I have x equals, well, negative 28 divided by negative 4 is positive 7. So my x is a positive 7. So what is the volume when x equals positive 7? And you're wondering, why couldn't I just use y equals 80? And that would be a legit question. Here's the reason. When we look at this equation, we don't see, this is what I graphed, we don't see y's over here. This is a function, and we even think of this as volume of x, actually. We think this is the volume of x. So we're only inputting values that are x values. So now we know that x is going to equal 7. Let's see what we get for an answer. So I'm going to take this, and I could type in x equals 7, and I could find out where do they intersect. That would definitely work. It would be way up here. On your graphing calculator, it would be so much prettier. Um, in fact, I think actually I'll probably do that. I think what I'll do is just to make life, my life easier, I think I will take this and plug it in right here, and wherever there is an x, I'll plug in 7. Now, if I had the graphing calculators um, that you currently have, I would just plug that in, but again, I left mine at school. So I'm plugging in 7 here, and I'm seeing 3,000... 920. And the question again went back to volume. What is the volume of this rectangular box when we know the length is 80? Well, when the length is 80, again, we know the width and the height is 7, and that makes this box 3,920. If I had your calculator, I would graph it. I would simply go second trace the value, plug in 7, and you would see that 7 matches up with 3,920. All right, let's go to the next one. What is the maximum volume? So the maximum volume of this particular one, um, you're going to come back to this, which is just not pretty here. It's not pretty at all. But on your graph, you're going to go second, trace, maximum, and you're going to identify the maximum. I'm going to come up here. Go up to the very high. There. Where is it? Okay, this should be our maximum. So this is our maximum, 11,664, 11,664. That is the maximum volume of this package. Um, but then it says to us, what are the, oops, there we go. What is the maximum volume? We have it. Now it says, what are the dimensions when we have maximized? So remember our dimensions here. There's two x's and one y's. And when we look at our graph, our value in front is only an x value. So when I've maximized the size of this box, the x is 18. So I'm going to come back here. I know for a fact that this is going to be 18 because x is 18, and this is going to be 18 because x is 18. But how do I know, that's an arrow, sorry. How do I know what y is? Well, we had that equation, y equals, and I need to go back and check it out, but I think it was 108 subtract 4x. I'm going to sub substitute. 18 in here, and I have 108 subtract, okay, 18 times 4, well 20 times 4 is 80, subtract another 8 would be 72, and if I take, what is 72 to 108, um, that is going to be 28, 38, 36, so y equals 36, okay, so when we say the dimensions, we generally say length times width times height, but you really could say any order that you want unless they specify it. So here, my length is 36, my width is 18, and my height is 18. Let's go on to the last problem. An indoor physical fitness room consists of the perimeter of the room shaped in an indoor track, and a rectangular region is located in the center with semicircles on each end. The indoor track is located with the perimeter of space of 200 meters around. So it's looking like this. Okay, and then we have a semicircle on each end. All the way around is going to be 200 meters. And that's going to be the perimeter. All right, it says that we need to let uh, the length of the base of the rectangle is going to be x, and then the width of the rectangle will be y. Okay, so I'm going to come back here and just do a simple one again. This is x and this is y. And we have two semicircles. Express the radius of the semicircle in terms of y. Okay, so a semicircle is half of a circle. We know this length is y. And now the radius. Well, radius is only half of the diameter. So half of y would be the radius. 
Express the perimeter of the track. Okay, so here's your track. We have this rectangle right here. So how do we come up? We know this is x and we know this is y. Well, if I take these two circles and I combine them, there's one and there's the other, I just get one full circle. And so to figure out the perimeter all the way around here, we need to express this. We know that it's 200, uh, 200 meters around, so 200 equals. Um, I have a length here of x and a length here of x, so 2x plus. Now I need to figure out how do I represent the length of these two semicircles. Well, put together it's one circle. And so the distance around a circle is called the circumference. Circumference is 2 pi r. So I'm going to bring this part right down here, 2 pi, and I'm not going to put an r. We can see r can be represented by half the y, 1y over 2. So I have 200 equals, oh, and I'm supposed to write perimeter here, but we could do that. The perimeter of the function is equal to 2 pi plus 1 half y. And we put, oh, yeah, that looks good. 2x, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm getting a little sloppy here with my handwriting. Let me come back here once more and change it. We have this part, part first, 1 and 2. And now these parts combine to give us plus 2 pi times 1 half y. There we go. And we could replace eventually um, p of x or the perimeter of this, of this region with 200. Express the width of the rectangle in terms of x. Express the width of the rectangle. Okay, so that's here. Um, and we need to express that in terms of x. Okay, so the width is simply y, but we need to turn express it in terms of x. That means I need to take this equation. I'm going to replace the 200. Okay, let me make this prettier. So I have 200 equals 2x plus 2 pi, and then it was y over 2. By the way, there's a 2 on the bottom and a 2 on top. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is really 200 equals 2x plus pi times y. So now we are going to express the rectangle in terms of the width of the rectangle, which is y in terms of x. That means we want to we want to isolate the y and then on the opposite side the only variable you'll see will be x. So let's start by moving 2x to the opposite side by subtracting. And then let's divide by pi. And here we go. So this will be it. We have y equals 200 subtract 2x over pi. Express the area of the rectangle as a function of x. Express the area of the rectangle. So when we're talking about this shape, they're not asking me about what I'm shading in, they're only asking me about this region in the middle. So this region, the area of this rectangular region is x times y. This is your x and this is your y. But it says we only want to express as a function of x. So I need to find a way to replace the y. So to replace the y, let's look back to what we just did. I just came up with an equation for y. y equals 200, subtract 2x over pi. 200, subtract 2x, all over pi. All right, state the domain. So let's go ahead and let's take this equation. And again, it's going to be so much nicer if you're using uh, the graphing calculator I provided you right now. And so I'm going to come up here and let's get out of here. And we'll go back and now I'm going to plug this in. So again, we had on our paper A of X. Here we go. We're going to have um, X. So there's your X. Now we're going to take it times Y. Now what's the Y? Well, the, well, the Y had a numerator of 200 subtract 2X. And then we're going to divide that by the denominator, which was pi. And I'm going to see if we have a pi symbol here. There we go, pi symbol. And then we will shut this off. And that is our equation. <coughs> We've graphed it. We're looking for the domain. So it goes from 0 to 100. 0 to 100 is going to be the domain. And let's determine the maximum area of the rectangular region. So the maximum area, I'm going to come back to this, is right up top. Um, and we have, that's the second number, the y value is representing the area. So the maximum area is 1,591 square feet is the maximum area.